Hi everyone, Lisa Fazio, artist here, and in this segment we are going to learn about how to create a sketchbook that you can take with you around town or on location wherever you are vacationing. So sit back and relax, it will be very informative and enjoyable. Okay, so to begin with, the first thing is you need to pick out a really nice sketchbook. There's so many on the market, but my number one thing is to make sure that it is um, lightweight and it has the paper that I really want. So I'm gonna show you a couple that I've had over the years and kind of the how-tos. So the first thing with the sketchbook is the weight. Sometimes um, you can take your scales that you might have at home and kind of weigh them a little bit. If you have a certain backpack that you like to take with you or a purse, um, depending upon where you're going and how far you're traveling will determine what size sketchbook you want to take. There's nothing worse than going on a vacation and realizing that your back hurts because you've taken a sketchbook that is too heavy. That's a bummer. Okay, so here's one of my early ones. It's kind of funky. You know, I might pick it up at Michael's or wherever. Um, I, I was kind of crazy. I did put the weight inside. It says nine and a half ounces. And this one I realize I've traveled a, a lot with and I have my little segments here. And this one shows Florida. So what's the materials you take with you? Um, I'll go over that a little bit, but I'm just gonna talk about in this sketchbook what I have. I have pencil sketching um, from Florida here. I had thought when I went to Arizona that they're gonna have a lot of color. So I thought I would take colored pencils with me, some markers. You have to also consider the thickness of the paper because here the uh, marker might bleed through a little bit. So you have to determine, again, on your materials what to, what to pick. You might try it out before you go to see if that's um, a, a criterion which is important to you, if the markers bleed or not. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so let's see what else did I do in here. So we have pencil sketching, we have Cape May. So it shows you a little bit. I want people to understand that when you create a sketchbook, you are determining what goes in it. This is for you. Notice that there are rings here. You can't really pull it out, right? So people will say to me, why did you spend so much time on doing this drawing and you know you're never gonna get to take it out? Because it's really for me. It's just a, a reference for me to go home and feel excited, a little snapshot of my vacation or my travels. It helps me relax. There's a lot of reasons why I like it. You know, even if you have a long car ride, um, sometimes I'll take it on a plane with me. So here's ink sketching. I might put the date here on the bottom. I might put some words about how I felt. Um, a lot of times you won't remember from a vacation um, what the names of things are because you've seen so many things. Um, not only on your camera do you take a picture of, let's say, a sign that t says where you are so that you can kind of timeline it when you're looking through your photographs, but to put it in your sketchbook would also be helpful. And the date, you don't have to. Um, this is kind of a fun one, it just has family. You know, what are the subjects? We're gonna talk about that. Um, you're gonna make it as fun for yourself, whatever you wanna do. I don't even sketch ahead of time, I'm just making a line pen, pen sketch. If somebody has an extra head or an extra something, I just make it part of the artwork. This is about you having fun and just being creative. Uh, what else can I show you here? Uh, this is a mishmash of people. It doesn't really say anything. It's just kind of an abstract kind of fun. It's all about having fun and recording what's going on. Um, sometimes I'll put little boxes um, because maybe I want to just change up the whole composition. So that's a lot of fun. So this is a little tiny book. See how small it is? It just fits right in. So I'm gonna go over a couple and show you. And then as I do that, I'll show you the supplies I might carry. So for that one, I might have used a Sharpie marker. They have them, they're really fine tip. They're really easy. However, they dry out very quickly. So you might have to grab a couple of them. So for this one, this is a, the super lightest one I have. The other trick is maybe to remove a few pages before you go away so that it's not as heavy. Um, you can also test it out, get two notebooks before you leave to see which one you might want to take with you. But this one is super light. I think I probably took some pages out. This one has perforated edges so that you can make it into a little painting. Here are the edges here. So this one is um, of Central Park little pen like this, and I just sketched it away, and I brought some watercolors, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later on how you can do that. But this is fairly simple. Um, it's about you recording what's around you uh, and what excites you. Um, again, it's about a personal journey and about you uh, taking a little snapshot in your head about what's going on and putting that on paper. If you are a camera person, great, you record your life with cameras, but this is about you taking a little bit a slower moment and just recording the small minute details that maybe a camera would not pick up on. 
Okay, so again, I sketched it and then I did the watercolor. I don't remember if I did it on location or if I did it back at the studio. Does that really matter at the end of the day? No, unless you wanted to uh, get, this is springtime, I remember, because it was a light green, if you wanted to capture the color on site. That's the only reason why you might want to do that. So these put books notice are both the same size. This one, uh, I don't even think they sell it anymore. But what's nice about this one is um, they have sketching paper on one side. Oh, is this the one I wanted to show you? So this one has a sketch paper on this side, and this is the side with the watercolor paper. So again, depending upon the medium that you want to work in, this is marker. So they sell like um, a gray value marker sketch, and th this is this was marker paper that I had put on it. I wanted to have a nice value sketch. Your value sketch is about your lights and darks, your grays, right? And this has a lot of nice information. This is even maybe even nice just by itself, and then it creates um, a nice. Uh, value sketch for me so that I can transfer it to be a color sketch, right? And this is watercolor. Um, sometimes on location, it's hard to really match the color and you have wind element and other things. So I might tweak it a little bit when I get home. And remember, it might be sunny. So if it's sunny out, it's really hard to match colors. Um, the, the watercolors dry really fast. They don't look the same after they dry. So that's why you might want to just do a little bit of your color wash on location and do the rest of it when you get back in your studio or your home when you have a little bit more time. Uh, what other ones can I show you in here? Again, same premise, uh, sketch. This looks like it's marker paper again. Um, this is actually a local place here in Roslyn. That's uh, the last one I wanted to show you. And then also, it doesn't have to be buildings. Buildings can be difficult because it has perspective. Do whatever feels inspiring to you. Right now, we're in spring. Boom, spring. So just go in close and look how uber delicious the, just the sketch is. So let's talk about sketching. This is the pencil, nothing fancy, that I take with me on location. It's a, a little push button. The trick to this is you have to carry enough lead. So if I shake it here, you can hear the lead inside. So you want to make sure you have enough lead. Always carry at least more than one because you're going to either A, lose it, or it breaks or it malfunctions. It is a mechanical pen. You can carry your old-fashioned pencil, which I have here, but you do have to carry um, a small, I have it somewhere, a pencil sharpener with you because you know it's going to break. But always make sure you have a backup. I like these, I like to pick a lead that's a soft lead so that this way I can get in the gradations of darks and lights in here. Uh, again, starting out with my bigger shapes, coming in, and then just kind of doing a cross hatching, which is sort of a back and forth like this with my pencil. Um, sometimes if I go really, really dark, it is going to become granulated, and you have to be mindful that when you close the book, you might have some of the um, graphite appear on your watercolor. Not fun. You could just put a piece of tissue paper in between. Again, an artist has to learn how to improvise. This is how it works. But nevertheless, it's a lot of fun to have a little book like this that can tell you about what your day's journey is about. What other one can we do? This is a small one, kind of fun, very lightweight. I like to take a notebook to the beach. Why? Because the beach has the best subjects. Everybody's laying, they're sleeping. You know they're gonna be there at least for five minutes. It's like free modeling, right? How cool is that? So again, nothing perfect. It's just fun, just random people <clears throat> on top of each other. When they go to move a little bit, I just stick them somewhere in there. It's just fun, means nothing to me. It doesn't have to be in proportion. It's just about, says beach, fun day at the beach. So I want you to be imaginative and think, how much fun can I have? All right, so those are small notebooks. What else can I show you? Let's show you some fun things. So this is a fancy hody note holder for your sketchbook on location. So I didn't get into the fact that when you go on location, you should make sure you have a good hat, you have your suntan lotion, you have a water bottle for yourself that you make sure that you're hydrated. They have really good camping chairs that you can bring that are lightweight. So what I take with me is a backpack and my chair. If I'm going to Central Park or if I'm going overseas, obviously I'm not bringing a chair with me, but I might take this, depending upon, again, how much weight I want to have or if I have somebody with me who doesn't mind carrying some of this with them. So this one is a stable, and you, put, you just hook it here in the back, and it comes with these really cool little holder thingies. And you put it on the side, such a fancy name I have, and this is for your brushes. So the way that would work is this is a folding cup, Really easy, pops in here. You put in your water, 
and then this holds your little brush. I don't really do that because I'm always worried I'm gonna lose my brush, but it's there in case you wanna have more than one brush. So it sits up against your body like this. Now you're gonna say, where is the paint, Lisa? The paint is here, how cool is this? This is made out of metal, so it sticks to here. How cool is that? Some things are just fun, I have to tell you. One thing about being an artist, you can get really addicted to buying a lot of different cool things. You go to somebody else and you go, what is that? And that's how you shop. Okay, so this I got on Amazon, it's metal. So you pop this, this guy open and they have a little, um, little handle on the bottom here. So some people actually hold it like this when they're painting, you don't have to do that. Uh, and I pop it open like this. I always put a little paper towel in between because um, it's gonna be wet. That's basically what it's gonna be. It's gonna be wet. So I'm gonna pop this open. The other thing I do is I make a little um, uh, swatch, I don't know what to call it, of the colors that I have in here. Because remember when we're on location, we can't always see the colors because it's so bright, the sun is so bright. Okay. So it's like this, we're gonna pop in. I wanted to show you how this all works. And I will do a, de a little demo too, but I just wanna show you this. Uh, little tiny water, like this, no biggie. Notice it's not completely full. Hello, it's a lot of weight to be carrying water. Uh, have I dedicated a water bottle that I'm drinking? Yes. Okay. So I'll turn it like this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I just would come in here, dab here. Uh, let's see, I have yellow in here, so I could just show you a little bit. I mean, I'm gonna demo in another piece, but I wanna show you how I use the palette. You're mixing in this area. There's only two areas to mix, so you have to figure that out. And then you just draw in your color like this. Always carry a paper towel. These are the best. They have them at Home Depot. They're workman ones, really great. Um, don't ever fill it up all the way. There's no need to do that. And the water is not really toxic. If you're gonna put it in the ground, it's fine. Um, can't really take this on the airlines with you. They have other ones that are plastic because this is metal. Um, they're not really keen about the water. So sometimes you might wanna sketch on a plane or a long, a long train ride or a plane, you know, something like that is fine. You have to figure out what the regulations are for that. But this is sort of a great little cool setup. Everybody loves this. They sell a, lot, a larger version, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, but this is the smaller version that fits on here. Cool, right? Getting inspired yet? I hope so. Okay, so that's that. Let me just pop this guy down here. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about um, on location for Europe. What is it that I look for? Um, sorry, let me just close this a little bit. Okay, and then we'll talk about every day. Okay, so if you're traveling, you can go online and pick up photos ahead of time. Um, and then get a feel for what the area looks like. The colors you might need in your palette. Um, again, the conditions, how much, um, temp the temperature it is. Like, cause remember, you know, when you travel to, you know, we're here in New York, if you travel to Alaska, you're gonna have to do different, you know, uh, temperatures, right? So how much gear are you gonna have on you? So you wanna keep it like lightweight. So this is a little book that I had done for Alaska. And maybe before I went, I might've decided, you know, always put your name inside the book. Uh, your contact information. The worst thing is going on a vacation and losing your sketchbook. How many times have I had family stop everything that they're doing and look for it? This is precious to me. Um, the other cool thing is um, in the back of this one, there's a little pocket. So you can put like an itinerary in here if you know where, you, where you're gonna go. And then each day that I do go, I do put what day we did what. Again, helps me with memory. Uh, and then it coordinates with the front of the book. Just, these are just my tips. Again, has my name, my phone number, and then I might do a couple of sketches ahead of time. Now this book is a watercolor book, which means all the pages are thick and they're all strictly just for watercolor. Can you sketch in it? Yes. Just know that the ink will be received differently. So maybe in this one, I used a uniball pen. When you work like this and do this kind of sketching, it takes a lot of uniball pens. Um, I've already gone on vacation and looked at the waiter and said, can I buy your pen? Because I've ran out of pens. Especially if you're running from one location to the next, you, you don't always know the duration of how many pens you're gonna go through. Uh, this is an inkgel pen, and this one is a felt pen. So the felt pens will go through much quicker. Um, just keep that in mind. Some are thinner than, some are thinner than others. Also, the pens will give you a different richness, darkness. So this one is ink. 
and also probably new. When you go through the sketchbook, it might get a little lighter because remember, I'm running out of ink. Um, these are really neat. I don't do perfection on location. You're on a vacation to enjoy yourself. So I'm gonna just get the story. And then I might, when I have time, you know, in between traveling, if you're waiting a line for something, I might then pull my book out and sketch. It's a great little way to occupy your time and to kind of feel like you're in the moment. Okay, so I do do these little thumbnail sketches, they call them. Um, they just tell me the story. It's just really, for me, just making visual memory for myself. It's not that I'm going to make a painting out of each one of them. Uh, so this one behind me is this painting. So from here, in Alaska, most of the, uh, believe it or not, the trees really only grow on one side. So here's my rendering of one of my sketches that I made larger. I used my ink. I used the color reference. See how it is? The color reference. Uh, this one says Denali Park. And then again, I have down here, you know, uh, bears grazing, moose, foxes. I might talk about what's in the location. But that's how I would transfer my sketch onto a larger painting format when I get back to the studio. So it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. All really fun stuff. What other things can you do? Now, notice this book is a little bit different. Okay, different companies. You have to go shopping and see which one you which one you like. Uh, I believe I picked this one because it was watercolor, and maybe it was on sale. So here's a little picture of me. If you can see, I'm in Italy. So it's always nice to take a picture of yourself on the location because that will also kind of give you a visual memory too, and it's fun. I mean, how often are you going to go that I'm on a rooftop and I'm going to I'm going to paint the uh, Vatican? So let's see what we did here. Again, uh, I did a lot of sketching here, and then I might have, I'm just going to read a little bit. It says here, uh, one of the Italians came over to us while we were eating, you know, gentleman that owned the place. He says he noticed that we were traveling with, with all these women, with, with, with my um, husband. It says here, husband states, traveling with three women, um, no wife, no life. And it was just funny, so I just wrote it down. And then I wrote here, Rome is noisy, crazy, drivers, motor scooters, very religious, full of history, where my grandmother lived. Um, and then, and then I have here what the view is and then the address. So these are just like little tidbits that are comfortable for me. Tells me a little bit of the story. Um, Italy has these really cool trees. I wanted to find out what kind of trees they were. I wrote down in my notes what that was about. Um, a lot of it might look the same to you in the ink, but then that's when you can throw in a little bit of color. Um, here I wanted to show you that, you know, not everything is finished. <clears throat> That's okay. You could go back and you can go back in your photos. So here's a little color. Boom. A little ink drawing, a little wash. I have another little travel palette that I take with me. This definitely says Italy, doesn't it? These are the colors of the of, of the uh, vineyards. Yeah. And what's the last one? And then this is Burano, of course. This is the colors of Italy as well. Again, I might have just touched on the colors while I was there and then finished it when I was back at the studio. You don't want to sit on a location for a whole hour doing something like this. It's just a quick memory. You know, if I was having an easel and this was a painting workshop, this is about quick sketches on location to kind of just touch what it is that you like about what you're seeing and then move on to the next thing. Oh. Another one is here is, uh, I believe this was, uh, well, you could probably tell just by the sketch here. This is London. Um, Again, when you're walking around and picking up these main locations, you want to be able to know when you pick up the book where it is. So you're like, what do I sketch? Also notice there are no people in the sketch. You determine what it is that's the most important thing. I really loved the grail work, and I thought that was really cool, so I decided to just focus on it. I'm not going to do a big painting of this. This is just for me, for visual information that I find exciting. Again, you might find something exciting, you know, whatever it is that you find. You have your traditional bridge. You're like, well, I have to draw the bridge. And you tell, I tell my family, you know, go get something to eat. This is what I'm going to do. Um, and you're going to have to also put up with the elements. Is it raining? Am I under an umbrella? Yes. Um, and then just things that have kind of had me remember what the neighborhood is like. Again, some maybe are more finished than others. It doesn't matter. When I come back at the end of the day from my trip, it's about what I like. Here's, here's Ireland. Really nice. And the book is determined based upon what you want it to be. I happen to have themed it. But it doesn't always work that way. Maybe you just want to draw every day. So what does that look like? I'll show you that. So an everyday sketchbook book could be just simple things. I wrote here daily. Wait, here, daily. Okay. Look how old this thing is. Um, don't get crazy about dates and everything. Again, the important thing is to put in, 
your information of where, who you are. Notice the back doesn't have any dates on it because this is just my everyday living. This is regular paper paper. So what are the important events in my life? Well, I'm always sketching, which I'm going to show you, Central Park. Here it is. So I've sat here and I've drawn this more than, more than once. And this one took me probably about 45 minutes. Um, the people moving, right? They're eating lunch, they're not eating lunch. So again, I have learned to paint, you know, draw quick enough just to get the story down. Um, I'm not always drawing people. Maybe now it's spring and I'm drawing flowers. Again, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. It's just a, a visual story here about your life. You can do your animals. Here's spring again. Uh, one time we were on vacation. One kind of fun thing is everybody's sleeping. Everybody was sleeping. I was bored. I'm going to draw you. I can't tell you how many family members get annoyed and go, I don't look like that. It's hilarious. It's for me. I'm having a good time. You're, you're, you're a subject. You're, you're sitting there. That's too bad. And then I've had family members take my sketchbook and go, well, I'm going to do that. And then the other thing you can't get worried about is here is Central Park again. It's not finished. Who cares? It's just a quick rendering of whatever, how much time I had in that minute. If I feel like going back and looking at the photograph and making it beautiful, I will. Don't get crazy. This is about you having a good time about the creative flow. Okay, what's the other thing I wanted to show you? I wanted to make sure that I had time to show you a local sketch and I wanted to explain what's behind me. Okay. So here I am to show you, uh, this is me. In Central Park the other day, I had a friend come with me. I don't have normally photographer come from behind me. And I'm sketching. There I am holding the sketchbook, and I'm just doing a quick rendering of Central Park. And then this is what it is right here. So this is me sketching this. Okay? Very quickly, on location, boom. There's the pencil I just showed you. Right? How cool is that? Now, this is what it looked like. Okay? But it's not always going to be like that. You have this. People walking up. A path with a bicycle. Um, the, the, the light changes. There's sun. There's no sun. There's always going to be some type of element going on. You have to put in and take out what you feel is important. Again, you are in charge. So, for instance, in this picture, I have these three little, I don't even know what they're called, some type of... Um, block here. In my sketch, I pulled it back further down because I wanted to really showcase this area here. You get to decide what's important and what's not. You know, did I put the buildings in? Yes. Did I maybe move a tree over one or two times? You know, over here? Yes. This, this little tree here I might have moved over just because you're an artist. You get to decide what's the most important thing. Again, it's about just doing a little visual uh, memory of what's going on in that one current moment. Um, what else can I show you? So I wanted to do a little bit of a demo to make sure. So I showed you how to do a little pencil sketch. I'm going to just show you down here. So I did the pencil sketch. But the next thing I might want to do is add in some ink. So here's one of the ink pens I like to use. One thing cool about this notebook is it has this little rubber band here. So if it is windy, uh, it's good, but I always carry an extra rubber band here or a clip, one of these guys. Uh, you have to really be prepared for everything. So this is a screw-off one. This has ink that you come in and you fill it up. It goes into a little barrel here, and then you, you, either, you either pull it up or you or screw it up. That's what it is. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, one of the things is you want to make sure you have scrap paper. So you want to make sure that it's started already because you don't want to really do that on here. So this is ink. So I probably did this in pen. Uh, remember, I'm sketching upright. It probably, if the ink starts to run out, I'd have to lay it flat, but I'm just doing this for demonstration reasons. And this is the cross-hatching technique. Do, 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 do. The other important thing is it has to be waterproof, right? Because I'm going to put watercolor on top of here. And one of the ways to test that is to just take a little bit of water and bring that across. See? Waterproof. That's how you know. So that's kind of important. Also, there's a drying time. If I drew immediately and put the water on it, it might blur. Maybe you might like that. I don't know. So you have to remember those elements. So I showed you how to use the watercolor palette, um, showed you how to use the pen. Um, what other things can I show you? Local stuff to do. I explained to you why you would want to uh, omit or not put in the sketchbook things. So we live here in Long Island. It's beautiful. 
The other way, this is a much larger book that I have. It's heavier, but this is, again, truly just for me. And I started it during the pandemic because I wanted to be able to draw outside. I would draw in my car if it was too cold. And I absolutely love it. So this, again, is just for me. So this is Cedamere. So this one, I changed my whole look. I decided to leave the space going around, and I am incorporating ink with watercolor and now some calligraphy. You can go online and see lots of different programs that you can register for that will show you how to make a really cool sketchbook. Uh, myself, LisaFazioArtist.com, I have sketchbook art. We are going to be at, um, where am I going to be? At? The Art Guild, I'm going to be working on workshops on location. It's all about you having fun and just finding the joy in the area. Here's Old Westbury Gardens. Again, including the ink. Everything doesn't have to be finished to perfection. This is about, look, again, I can't take it out. This is truly just for me. How about just doing it all in one color? That's kind of fun. No, there's no rules to this. This one, I'm not even finished. Why is there a rush? You're just supposed to be enjoying yourself and enjoying the whole process. So I hope that you had found this enjoyable and that you're going to get outside and try to do something for yourself. Um, it's a lot of fun. Just go shopping for different materials. Uh, make sure you keep in mind that you want to keep it simple. Um, look at the weather. They have really good weather apps. Make sure you check it uh, beforehand. They have ones that you can check each hour. Um, make sure you're hydrated, and um, there are going to be bugs and elements around, so make sure you bring your bug spray. But number one, make sure you have a really good time uh, and just keep doing it and just keep practicing. I hope to see you soon. Come join us at the studio, lisafazioartist.com, and we'll have fun for sure. Talk to you soon. Bye.